Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Azure X, and uh, I kind of just wanted to do a video talking about a couple of core principles when it comes to Linux and when it comes to the free software movement and some other things. Now, um, to say that I am a strong backer of the free software movement is a pretty good idea to say that because I pretty much am. Uh, but the idea of me saying that I only run free software is kind of a little bit uh, guilty as charged. I actually run some proprietary software on my Linux. Uh, go figure. Um, anyway, so starting off, um, I wanted to talk about the difference between free software and free software. Now, how you guys are sitting here going, wait a minute, how can he compare free software to the same thing? You can't compare two things unless they're different things. They are different things. One usually goes along with the other, but not always. And there's very few cases of one being not with the case of the other, but for our purposes, there is a few. Actually, I think there actually is a few. But um, when it comes to free software, I'm talking about the difference between financially free software, as in the financial definition of free, and politically, ideologically, so on and so forth free software. So financially free software is software in which you don't have to put down a dime to run that software or to use that software. It's free software. With the other definition of free software, it's software which respects your freedoms. It doesn't make you control or lock down to do one particular thing. It is a software which respects your freedom. It is in that definition free software. It is particularly software which doesn't control you. It doesn't tell you what you can and cannot do. It allows you to do what you want with that particular software. Linux follows under both of these ideas. It focuses on the solving the problem that many operating systems have, especially the two major ones, Linux, uh, Windows, and Mac OS X, in which the software, most you can get free software on it, but the actual operating system costs a premium. And with that premium, you don't get the ability to do a lot of the things you may want to do. Sure, everyone can argue the counterpoint that Microsoft pretty much let you do everything on Windows. But the definition of everything is anything and everything that does not involve the things that we don't want you to do. That should seem like an official statement from Microsoft, but the same goes for Apple and their Mac OS X. Ultimately, both of those systems control you in a way that you may not notice it. And they do it through a method of masking their intent. So, Microsoft and Apple both control you through their operating systems, but you get all these extra surface features which may make it seem like they're not controlling you. You can do with what you want with your PC as long as you do it using our software and our principles, and as long as what you want to do with it is what we want you to do with it is their basic idea. With Linux, it's a little bit different. Basically, you can do what you want with our P with your PC within the limitations of what is humanly possible for software and current generation technology to actually accomplish. No other what's uh, what else or whatever what no 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 none of, none of that oh you can only do it if you if you want uh, if you want to and that if we want you to it's you can do it as long as you can do it period. Um, Period, period, period. Let's put a bunch of periods in there. Period, period, period. Um, this became less of a professional, uh, less of a professional um, speech more than it is now a completely randomized ravings of a lunatic who runs Linux speech. But press onward. So you run this software, you run Linux, and I run Linux. Everybody should be running Linux, in my opinion, but. People who run Linux have this understanding that they can do whatever they want with their system. And there's people that have done crazy, crazy things with Linux. And there's always people who will. There's people who have done nothing extra with Linux. They just said, hey, Windows is uh, Windows is getting old. I like Linux. 
one of my points that I like to make a lot is looking at for a basic desktop user is they have a desktop environment they want to run. Um, let's say GNOME or KDE or one of the other ones. Well, a lot of people take the idea of just assuming that they have to run that operating system. If they like one part of KDE, they have to run all of KDE. That's not the case. In fact, you can actually, there's actually been forks and other things which have brought elements of KDE into other desktop environments. Like, uh, for instance, KWIN. You could use KWIN, which is their uh, desktop effects compositor, um, which gives you nice 3D effects for your windows and all that. Let's say that you like that app part of it, but you also like running XFCE. So you can add that into XFCE without any particular problems whatsoever. That That's not a bad deal. That's not a bad deal at all. And it's, it's Linux and the idea of free, as in freedom, software that allows you to do such things. So if you've never tried Linux before, I strongly suggest giving it a try. As Gabe Noel put it at LinuxCon, closed systems close down innovation, but open systems allow for greater, faster innovation. Beginning on that idea, what he's basically communicating is that since users have a freedom to do whatever they want, they can try out new ideas or come up with totally new concepts on how systems should work. And they're not going to be withheld by, oh, your idea violates what Microsoft wants to do on our system, or your idea violates what Apple wants to do with their system. It says, okay, here's this cool idea. Send it out to the rest of the Linux community. See what they like. Most of what Linux accomplishes nowadays is done by those people who are trying new concepts, trying new things, and then bringing that into the rest of the Linux community. Some guy writes an application which, well, makes... Uh, uh, for, uh, let me let me get into more technical here. There, uh, a, some guy writes a file system, which is much better at organizing large files. Because the current systems... They run large files, but there are people who are running multiple terabyte hard drives who need a file system which works faster when working with a huge amount of files in varying sizes. Somebody wrote that. Then somebody else took a hold, got a hold of it and tweaked it a little bit, made it run on systems, make it run faster on systems that even had small hard drives. And then somebody said, okay, well, why don't we do this where we can add in a little bit of compression so that even with large hard drives, you get better performance because you are compressing your uh, your hard drive space. You compress your file space a little bit, um, and so on and so forth. And eventually, it got to the point where hundreds of thousands of people were contributing to this project and creating this new brand new idea on how to organize the file system and all these new tricks and new tips and all that. Hey, let's try this. Oh, that didn't work so well. Oh, okay, well... Uh, let's say person A goes, let's try this. Person B says, ah, that didn't work too well. Person C says, all right, I know how to fix it. Person A goes back and says, yeah, that works better. Person B says, why don't we tweak it like this? It's this collaboration that is only found on Linux, which is very unique. And I think one of the moments, that, one of the things that should be celebrated about Linux, I mean, talking, there should be fireworks, people going crazy on the streets, parades, stuff like that. Well, going crazy in the streets in a good way let me let me rephrase that going crazy in the streets celebrating not doing anything crazy like smashing windows um, although if you're bashing windows we'll, we'll, we'll join in on that if windows as in the operating system and if you're smashing down well I think it should get to the point where you're smashing down uh, it shouldn't get to the point where we're breaking down uh, the Apple stores and the new Microsoft stores and some of those. I don't think we should get there. So, uh, people of the Linux Republican Army, do not start doing that. Do not. We're not ready for it yet. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, Linux should be celebrating the fact that it's open collaboration without boundaries, without limits, without any of that. The idea that I can sit here and say, hey, everybody else in the world, I made a change to the software. How do you like it? Or, hey, everybody else in the world, here's this new idea that I just came up with, and uh, I put it in the software code, and like to see how you guys work. And then that can all contribute back into the core of Linux, and so on and so forth. So that's a pretty awesome idea about Linux. And that is the power of free software. 
And it also helps that it's also free software so that anybody can try it without having to sit here and pay 500 something dollars for an operating system now or 500 whatever amount of money that in your native country uh, for an operating system. No, 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 no. We just hand it out for free. And uh, speaking of free, now we're going to, I'm kind of done with that lecture. So uh, uh, let me know what you guys think about that, that little bit there. Um, I know it kind of drifted around a little bit, may have not been 100% on point or concise. Uh, really kind of just a uh, spur random moment, uh, spur of the moment kind of uh, random uh, thing that I just decided I wanted to try. Um, hopefully I get good reception on it, but yeah, guys, uh, leave a comment, leave a like, do whatever you want, leave a dislike if you really hated it, which I'm not going to get mad at you for leaving dislikes. There's a reason why there's a dislike button and a like button, um, versus Facebook, which just has a thumbs up button. Um, uh, but please leave your comments. Uh, tell me what you think about it. Uh, now going on to my next segment, this is kind of my off topic. I don't really care. There's no structure to it. If there was one in the in the previous section I just did, there definitely isn't going to be one here. Um, kind of just ramblings here. Um, I am totally excited that uh, there's a there's a uh, place in it, somewhere in Germany where they started handing out Ubuntu Linux to replace people who are running Windows XP on their desktops or on their computers. Uh, they're handing out free copies, and they're even installing it and getting it set up for them. I think that's a really cool idea. I'd love to see, like, maybe in a good future, and I know this was kind of talked about, but if I could go in and, let's say, buy Ubuntu Linux for 30 bucks, let's say 20 or 30 bucks, I get Linux, but then I also get, like, what, two years or a year of support with them? Maybe they had to do something to kind of sweeten it up. Maybe add in, uh, like, a, uh, make it so that you can call into them and they can tell you how to install it on your computer or something like that. But I would totally love to see the day when I could actually, per uh, I could actually purchase a, uh, Linux operating system. And I know I just, I, I kind of went back on my idea of what Linux is all about by saying, oh yeah, it is a free operating system. It's protected under license so that they cannot sell Linux, but you can sell Linux for a, uh, um, for, you can sell things centered around Linux. So I could, like I said, I could purchase this and I'm not purchasing Linux. I'm purchasing the year or so of support or whatever extra features I get with it. And I would be more than happy to see that because if I could walk into a storefront, if I could walk into like Walmart or Best Buy or some of the other ones and have a copy sitting there and they'll pick it up and pay 30 bucks for it, even if I don't use it, I'd be more than happy to because that is helping out the people who write the software, who write Ubuntu, uh, who write Linux. Uh, that's helping them out because fortunately, unfortunately, Linux exists in a world where it still does cost money to actually do things. We're not quite quite in the Star Trek society yet, which, yes, Linux does does borrow a lot from Star Trek, if you guys have never uh, realized that. We're not in the Star Trek society yet, where people are merely out there working uh, to make themselves better, and every there's no sort of economy or definite, there's no poor people or anything like that. We live in a world still where it costs money to do things. It, it, time is money. Uh, if I'm a developer, I've got my own computer system. I don't have to pay upkeep on the computer, but I have to pay for the electrical bill. I have to pay for the water bill, the utilities bill. I have to pay for the food that I eat. I have to pay for the clothes that I buy. Um, and if I don't have another job and I'm working full time on Linux, creating free and open source software, um, I would uh, definitely go with that idea. Oh, open source. Um, I didn't mention it in my last segment, but open source is that idea I was talking about where you have open source licenses where somebody writes a piece of software and it's protected under a certain license which allows it to be freely redistributed and modified under certain codes where, for instance, um, like what a lot of Intel, what they do with the kernel is they use, they write code which is allowed to be modified and redistributed. Um, and so on and so forth. But more importantly, they uh, um, they have it so that all credit has to go back to Intel. So they uh, what what well not all credit. It's basically saying that 
this guy has modified it, but the original source code was developed by Intel, and they're the ones that are really the groundbreakers for that. It would be like if I create, like when I went back to creating a new idea, and we have multiple people collaborating on it, that just makes sure that uh, my that idea that I had was still is still pretty valid, and that nobody else is going to steal credit from me, because that's still an issue, but there's a lot of other things why open source is much better. Um, and some people do disagree, especially the people at the Free Software Foundation and the GNU Software Foundation stuff. Um, they disagree with some of the things with open source, but you know, you, you can't, sometimes you can't have all of the things you wanted at one time. You kind of have to progress. It's kind of a building thing. I think that if as open source software becomes more and more popular, then we can start moving into some of the true ideals that Richard Stallman really wants on a computer, and so on and so forth. Um, I mean, one of the key essential parts of Linux is the fact that, yeah, Linux is built around the idea of open source software, about free software, and it's free itself. And I, I really support Linux, and... Um, I'm actually going to do it sometime, but uh, I, I'm trying to decide. I want to buy, like, a couple of Linux t-shirts um, for whichever distribution that I choose to. I think I might buy an Ubuntu one. I'll definitely buy an Arch one, uh, maybe an OpenSUSE one. I don't know. But I'm going to buy a couple t-shirts, and um, the reason why is because the, those t-shirts I'm donating back to the Linux community. Um, because, yeah, like I said, it costs money to do things, and... I may not be a developer who's improving upon that, but one of the things I can help, I can help the project, uh, the Linux operating system out with is by giving them a little cash to go out. Maybe, uh, I mean, I, I've, I've done this before where if I really like some guy's videos that he's posting on YouTube, but like, uh, there's a, couple, a lot of guys, great guys out there that do all these uh, videos on YouTube. Um, other channels and stuff like that to do really great videos. I will oftentimes, you know, donate, throw a couple bucks their way. So maybe like $10, $15, um, get them a coffee, something like that. Something that just uh, shows them that I, I really appreciate what they're doing and um, I'm trying to help them out. And that's a major thing, especially when you're th showing, uh, when you're throwing money at, excuse me, when you're throwing money at some guy, um, it's not the fact that, oh, uh, this guy is doing really good, here's some money. It's more on the idea is, hey, here's like 15 bucks that I've worked hard for. I've worked a, 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 a part-time job and a student, so money's kind of a little tight on me. But here's some really hard-earned money that I took for doing my job. And I want to give it to you because I feel like you're doing a really good job and you can use it how you want. So um, I, I'm, I'm definitely okay with the idea. And I know some people freak out when... when uh, Linux, when people get asked to donate to Linux projects, but no, I, I'm really okay with the idea, I mean, I'm really enthusiastic about the idea of actually donating money to something that I really like, uh, it's the same thing as donating to charity almost, uh, charity, you know, I'm donating to them, uh, to a, a charity to help out, with, well, with whatever that charity is going for, so if it's like a, a charity for, um, breast cancer or, uh, some other things, it's the same, it's the same idea, I'm, donating that money so that they can use it to help out uh, and fund research and other things to help out people that are affected by whatever thing they're, the problem they're trying to help. And it's the same thing with Linux. I am donating to helping out with the development of Linux because I, I am fully backing the idea of Linux and it's just showing that I'm committing to the idea. And even though I'm not a developer, I can help out by getting the developers something they can use, maybe 15 bucks, maybe they can buy, um, they can buy printer paper, <laughs> I don't know, uh, something to help them out, they buy food, buy lunch, um, I mean, whatever, just as long as it's not uh, sitting there, well, I'm gonna go buy a new one, I mean, oh, all these donations, I made 500 bucks, now I can finally afford Windows, so yeah, that's kind of just some random moments here, uh, hope you guys really like these videos, uh, I'm looking to do more. Uh, maybe even get some other people involved in it. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, see you guys next time.